Good morning, my Yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome to our live video podcast here on YouTube. Now, we try to do this every Tuesday, 10.30 a.m. Central Time. Welcome. I'm so glad you're all here. <laughs> if you weren't here, I'd have to talk to myself, right? <laughs> like that would stop me. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, not really. <laughs> I was reading a lot. It looks like a lot of you are still getting some of the rain. Now, we had storms, uh, I think, like Sunday night, Monday night, um, last night. But they missed us completely. We got a little bit of rain, which was nice. So, hey, I'm okay with that. Now, I hope you all stay, stay safe in all of this crazy spring weather. Because, you know, spring is one of those times where we get a lot of crazy weather. But we also get some beautiful, beautiful weather. So for the, the, you know, the heat of summer hits. All righty. So again, I have a whole table full of things to talk about and to show you. So let's hit it. <laughs> All righty. Well, the first thing we need to do, of course, is clink in. And that just means tell us what you're drinking and where you're from. No addresses, though, okay? <laughs> All right, so clinkity clink clink clink. <laughs> I'm drinking good old Aldi coffee today. I added just a little bit of vanilla creamer. I'm going to move my cup over here now because you all know how clumsy I am and I'm going to be moving a lot of stuff and I don't want to knock it over. Remember that day I knocked it over? I think I ruined the carpet in that other house because it was when we were in the other house. <laughs> okay. Whew, lots to talk about today. I'm so excited about the garden this year. Um, last year, I did some walkthroughs through the garden and talked to you about the garden. Last year, we had two of the big garden boxes. This year, we have four. I'm growing peppers and zucchini and tomatoes um, cucumbers, strawberries, little baby pumpkins. I've got peaches on my peach trees. I noticed this morning I've got some little tiny apples on my apple trees. I didn't get any plums on my plum trees. Um, and then let's see, what else? Oh, I've got two blackberries and two raspberry bushes. So I'm super excited about what's going to grow this year, along with all of our flowers. Our hydra hydrangeas are coming back. My crepe myrtle starting to, you know, flourish out. So it's going to be a beautiful year. I just know my roses are doing perfect because we've gotten a good amount of rain. Now we need a good amount of sunshine. <laughs> but anyway, the question here I had for you, I would love to see what your answer is. Are you interested in me doing some videos like I did last year and the year before when we were in Colorado? Um, about my gardening, what I do, because I have a different way of doing it. I'm not really typical, you know, I mean, we have a tiller, but we use it in the small boxes. I don't go out into the yard anymore like I did years ago and grow great big gardens. I just, I just don't do that anymore. I loved it. It was a lot of fun. I don't really do any canning. I grow just enough, you know, to share a little bit with my family and friends and neighbors and then, you know, for me. Because the majority of what I eat is fruits and vegetables, and besides that, lean meats. I don't do any sugar because I'm diabetic. I don't do hardly any carbs. Um, so it's just, you know. Oh, she said it's snowing in Alberta. Well, you know you are way up north. <laughs> I have to tell you, when we lived in Rapid City, South Dakota, I did a whole garden there, and even though the gardening season was short, we had a beautiful garden, and I grew lots of wonderful things. I even canned green beans then, so we were in the Air Force, so we moved around a lot, and one of the places we were at for a while was Rapid City, South Dakota, beautiful area at the base there. So anyway, let's get to it, shall we? So one thing I wanted to tell you about, um, let me know, though, if you're interested in seeing some of my gardening videos um, you know, because I have a I have a playlist here on YouTube that talks about my gardening from years in the past, and I thought I would add to that this year, maybe in some of the um, where I put you know on Wednesdays I do a this and that video, 
And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. But I thought maybe I would intersperse some of my garden videos on Wednesdays. So let me know what you think. If you're not interested, it's okay. If you are, that's okay too. <laughs> I have to tell you, I before I was before I was starting, I like to to uh, go around look and watch some of the videos of some of the people that I follow, and one of them that I do follow is Bag of Day Crystal on Bag of Day um, YouTube channel, and I was watching her video where she ordered in a bunch of vintage Afghan kits. And she's so funny. I, I just love the way she does things because, you know, she's just so real and she just puts it out there, you know. And she was talking about these Afghan kits she ordered off eBay. And I thought, wow, what a neat idea because you can really get some nice yarns um, and stuff. From, and, and even if you don't use the Afghan kit for what, what it's, you know, what you're going to do with it, you can always use the yarn for something else. And I and and so I thought, hmm, I wonder, I wonder if there's out there. There are really a lot. She ordered hers off eBay, and you can find these. They're vintage Afghan kits on eBay and also on Amazon that people are selling. The yarn is still good with them. They still come with patterns. You know, the the outside plastic might be a little bit dingy just because it's from the 60s and 70s. You know, but the the yarns in it are just beautiful. Anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. I never, th I never thought to do that. And I think it's a really neat idea. Okay. <clears throat> so, all righty. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is my shout out. And I, I um, was really, this, this one was kind of funny because I was going to do this one last week. And I switched what I was going to do last week because of the person I wanted to do last week's. Anywho, long story short, um, Kim from uh, Yarning for a Smile, Yarnatopia. She joined our Facebook group this week, and I thought, oh, that is so cool, because I was going to do a shout-out for her this week. And I really like her. She's really real, down-to-earth. She's like us, just real. <laughs> you know, she's not trying to be an actress on her YouTube channel like a lot of people are. <laughs> yeah, obvious I'm not, right? <laughs> I'm just me. So anyway, the shout-out of the week goes to Kim, her YouTube channel is called Yarning for a Smile, Yarnatopia, and I'll put her link down in the notes underneath this video so that you can find her link, and then go over and, and subscribe to her channel. You'll really enjoy her, and, and you'll, you'll, you'll go, oh, wow, she's pretty cool, and something, another thing that I discovered is when I was searching on YouTube, you can go in and change your search perimeters. I think they're what they're called. It's like, I think it's like three little dots up in the right hand corner. <laughs> and so I click that and you can change it from videos to channels. And I, I really like that because you, then you can search the channels and see if you want to check out their videos. So, so you might try that when you're searching for new channels to look at. And I really, a whole bunch of really awesome ones came up. So I'm going to be really having, like this one here, more uh, shout outs now because I'm being able to find them a lot easier. And I'm really finding some really terrific channels. And the thing is, if they don't have a whole lot of um, subscribers, they don't come up as quickly. And so we need to go to those, to those channels and subscribe to some of these smaller channels that don't have as much of a following because they're really great channels, okay? Crocheting and art channels that I'm looking for. Some of them are crocheting and knit, some are crocheting and beading, and some of them are just a mixture of crafts but some really, really great channels. And I'm going to help you find them this, you know, this next to the spring. So we can really, you know, because I always say, we crocheters and crafters need to be each other's cheerleaders. Okay, and so go over and see her. Her name is Kim. Yarn, uh, yarn, yarning for a smile. And it's, it's the number four. <laughs> I think that's cute. Um, Yarnatopia, okay? And remember, I'm going to put her link down in the video, uh, in the notes under the video. So you can go down, click the thing underneath that says see more, and it'll come up, and then just click that link, and it'll take you right to her channel, okay? All right, so that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. I know what you're wanting. You are wanting to see who won the April giveaway, aren't you? All right, so let's review what, what the April giveaway is. You're going to get one of my canvas bags. This is a really sturdy bag, and this is an iron. It's a it's um, done with a heat press. It's not like um, 
you know those machines where you print them off and then you iron it on it's not like that this is a heat press so you can put it through the wash and it's a sturdy canvas bag it's nice and big you're going to get that as well as a yarn kit and this is the bumblebee yarn kit that you're going to get you can see it comes with everything crochet hook yarn needles eyes the little thing for the nose Oh, where did my little thing go? I was going to show you the nose again. Oh, <laughs> my granddaughter has it. <laughs> she was playing with it. <laughs> Anywho, you squeeze it and the nose comes out super cute. Okay, you get this and the bag. Are you ready? I'm going to put this back inside the bag because I'm going to pack it that way when I send it to whoever wins. All right, so. Do we have a drum roll? Brrrr. <laughs> All right, now, before I announce the winner, I want to remind you, never, ever, 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 under any circumstances, put your email address or shipping address, phone number, or any information in an open comment, meaning like here, don't put it here. Don't put it anywhere on Facebook or Twitter or X or um, any place you go to. Don't ever put that information out there, okay? I'm trying to keep you safe. Okay, so, <clears throat> if I announce your name... <clears throat> if I can talk. Hang on two little seconds here. There we go. When I announce the name of the winner, you can contact me. I will not chase you down because I don't know where your all your stuff is located, okay? So you need to chase me down. <laughs> all right, so there's two ways you can locate me. You can go to the Facebook, to the Facebook. You can go to Facebook and go to Posh Pooch Designs and send me a message okay or you can click the link underneath this video that says website click that link and then up in the corner on the website there'll be a thing that says contact us click that link and it'll go straight to my email okay and then you can send me your information now if you <clears throat> send it through the email I'll get your email address so I can send you the tracking number if you message me through Facebook, um, then you'll need to send me your email address if you want the tracking number. Sometimes I just go ahead and send it back to you through, through Facebook as well. But remember, this isn't a message. It's not open anywhere, okay? Because I don't want anyone to get your information, okay? All right, are you ready? The name, who won our April giveaway is Jenny Hanks. G-I-N-N-Y Hanks. H-A-N-K-S. Congratulations! <laughs> this is an awesome kit, and I'm really happy for whoever gets it. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Um, like I said, I had another one that was a, um, I think it was a little chick. I can't remember now. I forgot. Anywho, I gave it to a little girl at church. Um, because she's learning to crochet. She's 11 years old, and she is loving it. She told me last week that I'm her new best friend. <laughs> uh, she's got a really outgoing personality, and she's a lot of fun, and um, good friends of ours' um, daughter. So anyway, the one I gave her is a beginner. I think this one is a intermediate, and it has to do because of how tightly some of the work on it is. Okay? All right, so if Jenny's in here, the names are going pretty fast. Um... Uh, or you know her. There she is, Jenny Hanks. Congratulations, Jenny. I, I love it when you're on here when you win because then I can see your name. All right, Jenny, send me an email or a message and we'll get this out to you this week. If you message me today, I can get it out tomorrow because I'm going to town tomorrow. If not, it'll probably be Friday, okay? All righty. Oh, I just love it when you're on here and you win because then I know you hear me <laughs> and you know you won. Congratulations. Okay. All right, now we're going to talk about some yarn. All righty. I've got a whole bunch of stuff over here. We're going to go to the other camera. This is a new yarn that I just got in. This it, It's not a new yarn as far as um, um, like brand new yarn, but it is a new style. This is the Premier Color Fusion. And you know I love the Chunky Color Fusion and I've made some hats and scarves and different things out of it. Well, they came out with a DK weight, okay? And that means that it is a three-way, a three-weight light 
yarn. The name of this one is called Blue Jeans. That's the colors that I love in it. Isn't that gorgeous? And I stitched this up a little bit so that you could see how these colors work. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so this yarn, of course, is a Premier yarn. DK, 325 yards per skein, which is three uh, three and a half ounces, 100% acrylic. And the neat thing about this is this is also washable. Um, you can put it in the washer and dryer. And the thing is, <laughs> I say this all the time. Even though they say that the yarn is washer and dryerable, a lot of times I don't put it in the dryer and I'll wash it on gentle in the wash cycle. Whatever, not the yarn itself, but whatever I make with it because a lot of people are fine with that and that's okay if you want to wash and dry it in the wash machine. But I like to hang it out to dry or lay it across my dryer because if I work so hard to make something, I want it to last, you know? So that's kind of my, my thing. All right, so this is what Premier Yarn says about this yarn, okay? This DK weight 100% acrylic yarn is perfect for soft, easy care knit and crochet projects, and it is. It is super soft. Featuring the same gorgeous range of self-striping hues from their Color Fusion Chunky Yarn. And remember, I love the chunky yarns, the Color Fusion Chunky Yarns. It is perfect for creating colorful pieces with ease. And that's from the Premier Yarn website. Okay, if you want to go and check it out, again, I have my Premier affiliate link in the notes underneath this video. And you'll be able to click that link. Um, when you go to their website, there, there's a little thing that says yarn. Click that tab and it'll come down it'll, and you can go with whatever types of yarn you want or whatever weight of yarn you want. If you want to go right to this, just put in this, click the three weight or the DK weight and this will come right up. They have a lot of really nice DK weight yarns. I used to only, you know, for the most part, go with medium four and chunky fives, but I've been doing more with the three weight, which of course is the DK and I'm really enjoying it. And that's why I said with this, this is just beautiful. Isn't this gorgeous? And yes, this is a pattern that I'm working on. It's not perfected or anything yet. I just unstitched part of it right there. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm just, I was just working with it to see how it was going to lay. And I really, really love it. Really, really love it. And of course, I had to order three of them. <laughs> and I do really love that yarn. It's just, it's one of those yarns... Um, I have some, I think it's right, right, it's on this side, right there that are color fusions. And those are my favorite chunky yarns. I love the way the colors just fuse into each other. It's not like a, a chop of color that goes from blue to yellow. It's, it like just blends in. And I think that's where the name color fusion, you know, kind of come from, comes from. All right, so the other thing that we did last week was that we did the this and that, and it had to do with do you crochet items for the outside as well as the inside of your house? And I was really, really interested in your answers, and I was really, I, re I was reading through all of them, and it seemed like a lot of people had not crocheted things for outside. And there really are a lot of things that you can crochet for outside. For your patios, you can make tablecloths, you can make uh, placemats, and they're not really to be left outside, but to be used outside. You know, and a lot of times if you take uh, some of your leftover cottons, you can make beautiful placemats and coasters and um, tablecloths and things to be used outside, and then you can throw them in the wash machine. You can also decorate things outside, like those whirly jigs or spinners. Um, uh, the um, mandalas that we made. Um, there's just lots of different things that you can do out to make for outside. And one of the things that um, someone mentioned is that they don't really like to do what's called yarn bombing. And what that is, is where you crochet things and you hang it up out in like on trees or the fence and things like that. <clears throat> the problem I have with that, I like it. I, I really do like it. I think it's fun. 
But the problem that I have with that is that people don't come back and get it down when it's icky. You know, if, if you if you put like this big, beautiful thing around your tree or maybe around your mailbox or, or in your garden or whatever, and then it, it rains and the mud splatters and all that stuff, you know, you either need to take it down and toss it or wash it, you know, and so th so that's the part that kind I kind of don't like, you know, because I've I've loved walking through the woods and and finding some some yarn bombing somewhere, or walking. We were at the zoo in um, Colorado. They have a really great zoo in Colorado Springs, Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. It is it is the neatest zoo because you can feed the giraffes. They're down in like this huge pit thing, and they have the most interesting tongues. They're like purpley blue. <laughs> <laughs> and you can feed them lettuce and different things that they give you to feed them. But I, we were walking through there. It's a really neat, really neat zoo. If you're ever in Colorado Springs, go to the Cheyenne Zoo. Um, and it's not really very expensive either. But we were walking through there and I noticed, and it was probably for a particular reason on a particular day, but I noticed there were a whole bunch of crocheted flowers that were along a fence type thing. And they were kind of wound up and down. And then they had all different types of flowers attached to it. And I thought, that is just gorgeous, you know. And and I like that sort of thing. But when it gets dirty, oh, take that thing down. It's not pretty anymore, <laughs> you know. And it's a neat way if you've got a bunch of, like, leftover yarns that you don't really have much you want to do with. You can, you can yarn bomb, bomb your own garden or your own house or your own fence or whatever. And it looks really pretty. But just remember to take it down when it gets dirty, okay? <laughs> A lot of the yarn things that I made when we lived in Colorado, because if you followed me when we were in Colorado, um, we lived in Parker. It's been almost two years since we moved here or moved back here. It's been a year in our new house, 18 months in our new house. Then we were before that we were six months in the rental house. And then, of course, in Colorado. But I had the, that big deck. I had two separate decks and I would yarn bomb all around that deck. I did all kinds of flowers and things like that. And then when we went to move, sadly, I had to throw all that stuff away because it was really dirty and I didn't want to, you know, bring it to the new house. And so now I need to make some new things. I was thinking about, um, I think I'm going to hiccup. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> Anywho, I was thinking about, because I'm growing some pumpkins and I'm, I've got my strawberry patch in one of my raised beds. And I was thinking about uh, making like a trellis sort of thing um, for my pumpkins to grow up because I've got this, this thing that comes up like this for my cucumbers. My, my tomatoes are in cages and stuff like that. And I love having trellises and things. So I was thinking about going and just picking up one of those inexpensive ones at Walmart so that I could do some pretty flowers through it because you want to have bright yellow in your garden because it will bring the bees. It'll, it'll track the bees. And one thing that I do in my flower boxes is I plant marigolds in the corners. These are spots you don't use. You're not, you don't have vegetables in those corners. And then sometimes down the center, I'll plant a few marigolds also. And that will bring in the bees and the color. <clears throat> and it also, a lot of the animals like bunnies don't like the smell of marigolds. And hopefully they'll stay out of the garden. Now, I've always done this and it hasn't always worked. But it sure is pretty. You know, and it's fun to put color into your gardens and into your garden areas. And of course, I love flowers and gardening. But anyway, I really found your answers really interesting. Uh, one person was like, I, I crochet inside and outside, meaning they sit outside and outside, inside and crochet. And I do that too. <laughs> you know, I have a swing that I've had forever. We, we, we bought it in Colorado. We brought it with us. It's on our front porch. And I love to sit out there and swing and watch the neighbors play because we have a lot of kids in our neighborhood and we didn't in Colorado. And I love them. They're on those little, little hoverboards and they're, and they're playing baseball because we're in a cul-de-sac cul and they're playing baseball and stuff in the cul-de-sac. It's just fun. You know, I, I love that we have kids in our neighborhood because it's fun. And I love to sit out there and crochet. And sometimes they'll they'll wave at me and smile. And I like that. I like kids. <laughs> you know, I have crocheted tons of flowers. Kay asks if I have crocheted flowers. If you go into my playlist, you'll find a whole bunch of kinds of different flowers that I've crocheted. Loopy flowers and daisies and sunflowers. And I did scrubbies that have nice big I did them out of the scrubby yarn for the garden, and I need to make some more of them because I just love them. And I did pick up some more of that scrubby yarn. It's from Hobby Lobby, 
it's just a really neat, thick, scrubby yarn. And I, I don't really make that many scrubbies. I mean, I have some scrubbies that I use that I've made from it that I actually wash dishes with. But most of what I've used it for is outdoor stuff because it is a really neat yarn. But you can crochet using some of the, um, the it's called craft cord. It's what they make those bracelets out of. And you can crochet that into some beautiful flowers and different vines and different things like that that are going to be a little bit more sturdy. So check into that. There's also some different ones um yarn companies that have made things specifically for crocheting outside so yeah look it up and i don't know um i'll have to check with premier to see if they have but i don't know you know but the truth of the matter is acrylic is made from plastic it's actually made from crude oil acrylic yarn is acrylic is basically plastic that's why it melts so easily and you shouldn't do hot things on it but it is really good about um Um, she said marigolds deter from insects and I think some grub worms. Yes. Yes, that is true. I do that too. That's another reason why I do that. It, it, you're exactly right. So anyway, <laughs> you can make anything that you want to decorate outside with both cotton and acrylic. Uh, cotton is going to absorb the water. So if you live in an area that's more humid, you're going to probably have to wash that more often because if it absorbs the water, what happens? It gets mildewy. That's why when you use it in your kitchen and your bath, you got to throw those in the wash every week. You've got to, or they get stinky and we don't want stinky things in our, in our houses. Okay. But the other thing is, um, oh, that's a neat idea, Jenny. She said she's made wind spinners with the Hobby Lobby scrubby yarn. That is a cool thing. That wind spinner that is right behind me, it's on this side right there. There it is. That's made with Hobby Lobby yarn. I had leftovers from um, making scrubbies and different things, and I took three different colors, put it together, and made, I call them whirly jigs. We always called them whirly jigs. It's, it was when, when I was growing up and I was first learning how to crochet, a lady in my church taught me how to make those, um, and she called them whirly jigs, and I put them all over the fence. We had, we had a chain link fence, and I made a whole bunch of them out of just inexpensive, like wind tuck yarn you get at, um, came, used to get at Kmart. And I made a whole bunch of them, stuck them all over the fence. I just loved them. But anyhow, yeah, that works great. Excellent. Okay, so you can crochet it for things outside. Um, just remember, if you're going to use cotton, it's going to get stinky and you got to wash it. <laughs> but some of the things that I do that are acrylic, I don't leave them out there like tablecloths or placemats or coasters or um, sometimes I, I've even made covers for the chairs and um, just mats that you can sit on because the kids like to sit in the grass but they don't like the uh, feel of the grass and we'll put a blanket down but sometimes they like a little cushion and I made little cushions they can sit on things like that and so we bring those in you know and I just put them in the garage and if it's a tablecloth or a placemat, things like that. I'll wash it and I'll just leave it in the laundry room on the shelf. And then the next time we want to go outside and use it, we just take it with us. Do you have a video on flower pot where you put the flower pot inside crochet type bowl that fix around? I do have some flower pot cozies. I have several of those. You can find those in, in my playlist on YouTube. I do. Uh, a couple of different sizes. I even have some, but you can put on uh, mason jars, too. I have a lot of those. Yep. All right. So what else did we do this week? So I want to show you this. On uh, last Friday, we did our Friday fun video. Put the string off the table. Let's go back over here. These are our Granny Square soap bags. I love these because they're roomy. You can put your soap in and all you do is you get this wet and then you just start rubbing it and the bubbles come through and then you've got a washcloth and soap in one. Another thing that you can do is grab all your leftover pieces of soap, like this gets too small. This is an, an oil of Olay, that's that's my favorite soap. <laughs> I use, this, is what, it's a, this is an oil of Olay renewal, I think. It's got some things in it for people with skin that's older like mine. But anyway, um, you can also, like if your soap pieces are too small, 
You can throw them in a bag like this and it does it does the same thing and you don't have to throw away those little pieces of soap. And I made these colors with Mother's Day coming because I thought it would be, you know, a really great idea to get some soaps and some, you know, lotions or whatever and put together a little gift bag for um, Mother's Day. Um, one of the things that I do like to do when we have baby showers, because, you know, mama has a new baby, we buy the baby, all these things, and we sort of forget about the mama, <laughs> you know, that had the baby, you know, and it's kind of nice to give a little gift if you're going to a baby shower to the mama, and this would be a nice thing to give her. Give her some lotions and some soaps and a sweet little gift bag like this that she can put her soap in, you know, make a little little bag and say to mama instead of to baby, you know. Uh, sometimes we forget that. But these are great to give like someone that's having, you know, a housewarming, their first house, their first apartment, first time they're going to college, lots of things like that. And this is really easy to make. It's just we did the granny square using two half double crochets, so it made it quite a bit tighter and smaller. Then we put them together, stitch around them, and stitch the top. It's really easy. And uh, I use these. A lot of people don't. I do. I love them. And I like these colors. And, of course, I made those out of cotton. A lot of people don't want to use cotton in the bathroom. They want to use acrylic. That's okay. Remember, you do what works best for you. Okay? <laughs> Alrighty, so that's what we did on Friday Fun Day. I thought it was a nice fun project. And then yesterday we did this bag. I'm actually going to show it to you over here because I want you to actually see how, how big the size is of this. This is our Ocean Cruise bag. I love this bag and I put I bought these glasses specifically. I bought them at the Dollar Tree so that it would match the bag. <laughs> I, my, I can't wear sunglasses unless they're, you know, prescription because I'm so blind. But I love this. It's got a nice big wooden button. Lots of room inside. And I love these handles. Now, um, you can get wooden handles or maybe um, um, bamboo handles. But I like these because they're, they're um, a stainless steel. They're not going to rust. They're going to hold up. And they gather up just a little bit the center of the bag to help kind of close it, but it holds a lot. And you can use this as your purse. You can use it as a bag. It can even be a crochet bag. <laughs> you know, take your stuff with you. And uh, it, just it just holds a lot, and I just love it. And, of course, this was made with the new Fable yarn. Let me come over here and show you that. Um, this color here is, is called Nessie. And so I thought it was perfect for the beach bag. It, it can be a vacation bag. It can be an everyday purse. You know, whatever you want to do with it. And you can make this bag with just one of these skeins of Premier Fable yarn. It has 7 ounces, 131 yards. And this one is called Mermaid. I love the names of these. They're so pretty. And this one's called Gnome. I mean, they're just neat, really neat names. It's such pretty yarn. Look at those colors. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that beautiful? And I have I have two other ones also. Um, they sent me five, and I'm real excited about it. I've got a basket going, and something else that we're gonna that I we're gonna make with these. Now, again, these are bulky number six yarns. They are I think 100% oh, 90% acrylic, 10% polyester. That polyester is that that rope that's going through or that thread that's going through it and this yarn is so soft well, one of the neat things about this yarn is a lot of times when you have a bulky number six yarn it's really heavy this is not it is still so fluffy and beautiful and it holds its shape well and so um i wanted to do that bag out of it and i got another um basket that i'm doing with another one i'm going to make a couple of nesting baskets and I think you're really going to enjoy this yarn. And again, if you want to go and look at all the colors, that Premier um, link is down in the notes under the video. One thing I do want to say <laughs> is after we loaded the video, we realized there was a spelling error that we could not fix <laughs> in the video because I did it in the uh, editing program that I use. And I'd have to completely take the video off to fix it. And so I put a little note in there underneath the video that says, um, 
it's it's at I think point it's just like right a, like right a minute right into it now I don't even know if it's a minute into it where I where I'm telling you the size and I tell you the size I think it's 22 inches around and 12 inches tall not including the handle and I misspelled the word not counting I'm not gonna tell you what I put in there but just it's an oopsie okay <laughs> just ignore it all right <clears throat> Okay, now one thing, uh, Heidi's saying she might use a different handle. You certainly can. I didn't want to go with wooden because if I take this on some place where it's going to get wet, the wooden handle's not going to hold up. They do have some plastic ones that are pretty cute. I just could not find one I really liked as much as I liked using stainless steel. And I, I like the idea of the stainless steel because it's not going to rust, it's not going to break, and it's going to last a long time. And of course, you can even do a cloth handle, you know, with, there's enough yarn left over. Um, I don't even know where I put that ball of yarn. Oh, it's over there. Um, that you could do the handle itself in the yarn. You could crochet a handle. I just really wanted the stainless steel. But again, that's me. You can use what works best for you, remember? <laughs> All righty. Now, um, so what's going to be coming up in the next week or so? Okay, <laughs> on Friday I have a really fun, sort of interesting <laughs> pattern for us. What I like to do on Fridays is sometimes I'll do something that's a little bit more intricate, but I really like to do things that are fun. You can, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> things that are fun, things you can stitch up fast, maybe use some of your leftover yarn, things like that. Um, and so I have a really fun uh, pattern for Friday. And then on Monday, it's Scrap Happy Day. So I have a Scrap Happy... No, wait. I don't think it is Scrap Happy... Yes, it is. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> I forgot what day this is. This is the 16th. So on Monday is our Scrap Happy Project Day. Okay, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to make, but we are going to be using a bunch of yarn. <laughs> no, not a bunch. <laughs> we're going to be using cotton yarn again, okay? <clears throat> but, again, it's something that if you don't want to use cotton yarn, you don't have to. But you might want to go through your cotton yarns and uh, get about three or three or five ounces of it out together because we're going to be using two strands. Okay, and that's for Monday. And, and then on the next Friday, I already have another really fun project for us to do. So, I mean, like I said <clears throat> in the past, I, I try to get things done three to four to five to six months in advance. And I do that because I need time to test the yarn, to test the pattern for, you know, people to correct my, my math, <laughs> you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So, anyway... Oh, my shirt. This is actually a poncho. <clears throat> you can wear it. It's just a mesh poncho. It belonged to my mother. Um, <clears throat> a lady that was in our church made it for her. I do not know the pattern for it, but I love getting it out in the spring. It's You could probably find it. I know it was a free pattern. Um, she got it off all free crochet website. Um... I'm trying to think, but it's just, yeah, it's just a mesh um, poncho. You can wear it flat or you can turn it. It's got four points and you can turn it and put points the front and the back. I do not know what it's called. Uh, Steph, I do have a pattern for plastic hanger pattern that's in my website. It's called Ernie's Hanger Cover. It's one that my mother-in-law taught me how to do and didn't have a pattern for. And so I tore, sort of tweaked the pattern and put it out there. So I do have a pattern for a plastic hanger. And it's your standard plastic hanger cover. Um, and again, you can find that. I believe I put that, that pattern in the Friday Fun Day um, playlist. So do yourselves a favor. If you're looking for something, <clears throat> because I have over, I think, 1,200 videos. Um, if you're looking for something in particular, go to my main YouTube page, which is Sarah Satch Crochet Designs. That's my main uh, YouTube channel. Okay. Then at the on the top there, I think it's like right under the video there, the intro video. It says playlists. 
click that playlist and you can look through all the playlists for all the different things that you're looking for. Or there's that little circle that looks like um, a magnifying glass. I think it's a magnifying glass. It's a circle with a line. And that's the search. And you can just put in plastic hanger cover or poncho or, um, I don't know, shoes, I don't know, you know, scarf, hat, shoe, you know, whatever. And you can even put in names of yarns. If you're looking for something made out of, say, Premier Fable or Premier Yarn or Lion Brand Yarn or whatever, you can put that in there and it'll come up. Okay. Um, the searches work really, really well. And, and they're really great to use because I, like I said, I went in and changed the parameters on my searching and, it, and a whole bunch of new channels came up. And I'm super excited about that, which reminds me, <clears throat> those that didn't hear at the beginning of the video, <clears throat> I've got such a dry throat today. <clears throat> Our shout out of the week was for Kim yarning for a smile at Yarnatopia. Okay, now her link will be in the notes underneath this video. Click that link, go watch some of her videos and subscribe <clears throat> because you'll really like her. I really liked her and she's, <clears throat> oh great, now I got the hiccups. If I hiccup, just ignore me. Okay, I'm not gonna hiccup. <laughs> okay, if I do, just ignore me. Anyway. <laughs> If you missed the beginning of the video, don't panic, okay? I always leave my live videos on my YouTube channel. And when you go to my main page, my main YouTube page, Sarah Satch Crochet Designs, where it has those little tabs, you'll also see where it says live. Click that live tab and all my live videos will come up and you'll be able to find the beginning of the video if you want to watch the beginning of it. Don't feel like you're going to miss out if you miss the beginning of the video, okay? <laughs> it's always going to be there. I don't delete them. <clears throat> I know a lot of people do, but I don't. But a lot of people do a live video several times a week, and I do one live video a week every Tuesday, 1030 Central Time, right here. <laughs> All righty, so on that note, I am going to let you go. Be sure and click that premiere link and go look around at their yarns. Be sure and go see Kim at Yarning for a Smile at Yarnatopia. And let's see, there were one more thing. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>